This brief talk draws upon the phrase Mad Handles as a device for framing my first year as a pre-tenure writing program administrator. To establish footing for this phrase, I begin by attempting a rhetorical crossover that orients Mad Handles as the idea operates first in the context of basketball and then in the context of data visualization, specifically graphs and charts. Following this setup move, I have a pair of examples to share, two graphs that function as Mad Handles and that in different ways complement pronoia or tactical foresight, a key idea for us as we planned and proposed this roundtable. In basketball, which seems to me a fitting context for Indiana in March, Mad Handles is pickup style lingo for prolific, flamboyant ball handling skills. Much more the purview of guards than turnover prone, forwards and centers, Handles refers to the ability to dribble the basketball quickly and securely while pivoting and spinning, keeping it in possession amid the angle cuts, screen setting, and defensive resistance, a complex dance of so many bodies in motion. A point guard relies on handles to negotiate and create lanes, and in this sense, handles are crucial for effectively orchestrating the coordinated buildup toward more advantageous and more prosperous positions. At this point, it should, I should take a quick time out to say a bit more about what I mean by mad. Mad handles are mad in that they risk appearing gestural excesses, all glint. But mad points at the specific conditions, frenzy and excitement, underpinning the development of these charts and graphs over the past several months, more than any attitude of fury or anger. To widen slightly the scope of this analogy, mad handles serve as one of many generative axioms for the courts where I spend my time these days. Not basketball courts, but rather the institutional, departmental, and programmatic courts across which I have accepted professional responsibility for play calling, for updating, maintaining, and advancing the program I direct. Now to bring man handles more fully in bounds, the phrase operates with a second significance, one related to data visualization. The graphs, charts, maps, and readouts that temporarily reduce and simplify complex situated activity, thus rendering the activity and embedded patterns or trends more open and accessible. Bruno Latour refers to these visualizations as handles, and in my nine months as WPA, I increasingly consider them vital equipment for knowing and for influencing how others think about and know EMU's first-year writing program. Here are the twin valences of MAD handles for point guards and for data visualization practices converge, and the crossover sets up another move, one useful to junior WPAs. I have just enough time to introduce two such examples. The first is a simple pie chart that accounts for the total number of GA ships in our English department this year. Before this chart, we did not have a concise or straightforward device for answering the simple questions. How many and where are they? Represented as slices of the pie chart, here are the 38 half appointments funded from the department's budget, a no-nonsense freeze frame explaining where the GAs are assigned. This particular handle, rudimentary though it is, has been especially important for us this year as we continue to get to know where first-year writing fits in the larger department. Next, this line graph shows my department's budget for GA ships. It simply reports the wonderful news of a positive trend line, a line item with more in it today than there used to be. But late last fall, we learned that the first-year writing program had, over the past three years, been assigning fewer GAs than in previous years. So there's a second important and contrasting trend line here in orange, angled in such a way as to offset the wonderful news suggested by the blue budgetary line. I hope by this point it is clear why we might think of this as a mad handle. It captures a question for which we have not, or rather have not yet, been able to find an answer. The line graph expresses the question directly, and I think it will be useful to us in helping others understand why the question mustn't slip away, passing unaddressed. For new, untenured WPAs, creating and circulating representational slices of data is invaluable for programmatic self-awareness, increasing visibility, documenting recent history, and planning upcoming adjustments. In her 2008 book, The Activist WPA, Linda Adler-Kasner emphasized the importance of telling a writing program story, a principle I fully embrace. Though with mad handles in mind, I am arguing for the value in speaking for our program's data visually with open data and linked visual models that will, if things go well, boost the tactical foresight required to improve a writing program's collective position.